What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel, welcome to another Pokemon Sword and Shield VGC 2022 video. Today we're going to be talking about uh, the top 32 teams from Liverpool Regionals. Uh, of course this happened over the weekend uh, in England and yeah, uh, if you guys enjoyed this type of video let me know. I guess that's going to be the comment question of the day. Uh, are you guys interested in watching me cover uh, results from regionals. Are you guys interested in hearing my opinion on that sort of thing? Uh, if not, let me know. Just be like, yeah, you know, this isn't the type of video for me. And uh, I'll probably just pass up on it next time. Uh, but last time the video was received pretty well, so I figured I'd talk about this. So yeah. Uh, also, if you enjoyed any point in time, leave a like on it. Subscribe to the channel and turn notifications because I bring you daily VGC content. And let's go ahead and get into it. So, Liverpool Regionals was this past weekend and the winner was Eric Rios. Congratulations to them. Uh, but once again, we see very heavy Zacian representation with tons of Incineroar usage, um, but we definitely see a lot more Sun representation in general. If you're unaware, uh, this Sun team, the one that actually won the regional, is probably the currently the best uh, the best team in the format. Let's actually get a little throwback to the Salt Lake City regional. As you can see, uh, the winning team was the exact same team. Granted, I'm sure there was a difference in like EVs and uh, moveset uh, in some form or another. Uh, but that's thing to note is that this particular archetype, the Zacian, Groudon, Incineroar, Gastrodon, Charizard, and Grimstar archetype is doing very, very well. Uh, but I do think that uh, it's a team that is, you know, if you play to your outs, like it's very easy to deal with. Um, and as certain teams become like more and more popular, uh, the more and more people will start to counterplay. If you're unaware, Amoongus and Ferrothorn are picking up in usage right now. And while Ferrothorn doesn't beat Charizard, obviously, and Amoongus doesn't beat Charizard, uh, these Pokemon are running grass moves more often. And Amoongus used to not run grass moves, but they're currently running Seed Bomb as a way to deal with Gastrodon since it underspeeds it under Trick Room and allows it to uh, one shot it. So that's like super, super useful. Uh, but yeah, I think that's like an, uh, that's one of the first adaptations that we're seeing at the moment uh, to help beat this sort of team. Uh, but we all know what this team does. You know, it screens Grimmsnarl, uh, it's uh, bulky uh, Groudon, it's solar power Charizard. It's it's basically like a hyper offense team uh, that patches up like the defensive issues with screens and uh, the fact that Gastron is able to eat pretty much any hit at least once except for grass moves and put threats to sleep that the team would otherwise not like dealing with like Calyrex Ice or other Trick Room Pokemon. So yeah. I think it's a very solid team. Obviously, like we don't have to talk about it too much, uh, but it is a very dominant team at the moment. Something else to note is Shedinja actually took second place at this regional, which is really heat. Shedinja has always been very solid on uh, on raid teams, and that's because uh, it's able to use Kyogre uh, to its advantage uh, in the fact that Kyogre is able to deal with uh, fire types like Incineroar, which a lot of teams, the only way they have to deal with Shedinja is Incineroar's. You know, Shedinja is immune to uh, every non-super effective hit. So if you use your Kyogre effectively and get rid of uh, Incineroar early, all of a sudden uh, they have like nothing for Shedinja and you can use that as a win con. Beyond that, Shedinja can be quite annoying with uh, support moves like Will-O-Wisp and uh, it used to actually run Toxic if you didn't know because it made the end games a lot quicker. Uh, but Currently it runs will because it doesn't have Toxic and Ally Switch, which is super, super annoying in some situations and leads to some mind games. Uh, so yeah, they were able to use that to, uh, you know, quite the success here. I think Ben here, Chef EGC, has one of the most heat teams we've seen. This is just straight up hyper offense, but there is a Galarian Darmanitan in there. And if you don't know, Galarian Darmanitan tends to run the ability Gorilla Tactics, uh, an ability that gives it essentially a free choice band and when you have a free choice band you have very little reason not to run something like a choice scarf but the whimsicott makes me think maybe it might be choice banded as well so it's like a 1.5 on top of 1.5 leading to a 2.25 times modifier uh so that could be really interesting obviously we don't have the info on the teams on hand right here and there was no official stream for this tournament so we don't have any super super in-depth info i can actually probably hit up ben on twitter and see what he used uh we see here a Eveltal uh, Groudon team. Now Eveltal Groudon has always been like a super useful um, archetype in the fact that it does well into pretty much everything but it doesn't like outright beat anything if that makes sense. I think the only thing it like seriously beats is most Shadow Rider comps uh, but its huge weakness is uh, in Kyurem White. And if you manage to get this far with an Eveldal team, that means you dodge to Kyurem White or you only played a few. Uh, and Kyurem White is super annoying for this archetype. I've run it a couple of times, and the reason it's annoying for the archetype is because it one-shots literally everything on the team. Eveltal, if you don't Dynamax, you're not AV, one-shot. Groudon, if you don't Dynamax, and sometimes even if you do, one-shot. Uh, uh, 
Incineroar, if you're not Shookaberry, one shot, Venusaur, one shot, and the thing that is supposed to be able to take an Earth Power, because it has Levitate, gets Levitate, uh, it just straight up ignored uh, because of the ability Turbo Blaze, and that just makes it so it gets one shot. So that's super annoying for the team, and as always, you know, Regieleki, it just it almost always gets one shot by things. So, uh, Kieran White's no exception. So yeah, uh, it, it's it's such a bad matchup for Evaldon, but um, you know, if you can avoid the matchup in a tournament, like that's super awesome. Uh, we see here uh, getting into honestly, just top top four was heat. Top four was super heat. We literally have a Galarian, our Manatan, and a Shedinja in top four. Like that's crazy. Um, as far as top eight goes. Uh, we see, you know, more sun. We also see some uh, some uh, Zacian Kyogre action. We actually see Lunaldon, which is an archetype that hasn't seen too much usage recently. Uh, Lunala Groudon is super solid. Uh, you usually use Lunala to get off Trick Room. A lot of times they'll run Meteor Beam uh, because you're able to... Most of the time you're not going to Dynamax the Lunala. Like that's, that's a thing that you just come to accept with Lunala. Uh, but Meteor Beam allows it to get up to plus one and usually one shot an Incineroar. Uh, which is really nice for removing from the field when you're running a crowd on team since obviously you don't want to get intimidated uh, Beyond that, it's just like standard sun room, but you use Lunala. So yeah uh, Top eight uh, we see a Zapdos nothing too special just like standard um, Just like standard uh, Zacian Kyogre stuff uh, Getting into top 16 by the way, this is my first time looking at this like this is a raw reaction uh, we see More Kyogre Zacian. we actually see Palkia Ice Rider uh, Palkia Ice Rider is super interesting. It had a lot of hype behind it at the beginning of the season. I think it kind of fell off. And I don't, I, I don't know. Palkia Ice Rider is like a combination that um, I quite like. And that's mainly because... <coughs> um, sorry. You can use Palkia to set up Trick Room for your Calyrex Ice. And also still just be like a really solid offensive Pokemon. You don't have to run minimum speed on it. Like, Palkia... Can be flexible like you could like this team has regieleki and palkia which means that it could go for a uh electroweb into a move with palkia since palkia doesn't usually run zero speed uh with like base 90 speed it can outspeed things with some investment but it also can still set up trick room enabling things like the amoongus and like the calyrex to do work uh so yeah uh i don't see a way to self-activate weakness policy on the team so one would assume they're running something like a like a life orb or maybe a babiri berry which babiri berry calorix is actually like a really solid call right now it makes getting trick room off so much easier um and if you're running like sword stance like that's basically a free sword stance in the face of his so yeah we see the uh same uh calorix or not calorix kyogre and kartana and shedinja team here on top 16 uh with elliot uh, Will here is running the standard Sun team. Uh, we actually see Zacian plus Calyrex Shadow here, which is kind of interesting. Um, I haven't seen too much of this recently. Usually when you see Zacian plus Calyrex Shadow, um, it's mainly meant to take advantage of the fact that Calyrex Shadow is able to Dynamax and lower defenses with uh, Max Ghost. Uh, it's able to run like a Focus Sash as well, so you can like burn things like Groudon and stuff, uh, which makes Zacian so much safer. Uh, and then Zacian is able to just do the rest of the work. Beyond that, it looks like it's... Um, just covering for its matchups. It's got Rillaboom and uh, and Gastrodon to cover for like Kyogre matchups. Uh, it's got Incineroar and Rillaboom and Gastrodon to cover for Sun matchups. And of course we have the uh, ever ever mysterious Thunderous. Is it support Thunderous or is it um, Defiant? I would say this on this team, I would uh, imagine it'd be Defiant uh, just because that helps out with the Incineroar quite a bit. Usually on Calyrex teams, uh, you see Defiant Thunderous and that's mainly just because Calyrex Shadow hates Incineroar. It, usually Incineroar will lead off versus Calyrex Shadow, and being able to get a like Defiant boost off of that on lead is always super, super nice. We see in 15th here uh, a Solgaleo Groudon team with Sun. I think that's actually really cool. There's actually a Suicune here, which is pretty awesome. Uh, one would imagine it's just like standard Solgaleo. Maybe the Solgaleo is actually running Trick Room for the Groudon, uh, but we don't know. Here's actually a really interesting one. Uh, we see in the Krosma Dusk Main, which is saying that I pointed out in the last results video, um, a lot of people tend to just meme on because Necrozma Dust Main hates facing Incineroar. Uh, but the interesting thing here is I don't see any outright Incineroar answers despite, or you know, be beyond uh, a possible Defiant Thunderous. And the rest of the team is pretty interesting. Um, like Eveltal plus, Eveltal plus um, Necrozma Dust Main isn't something that we've seen for a while. We used to see it when Xerneas was more popular. 
Uh, but what, what catches my eye more here is the use of an Arcanine. And you can imagine the Arcanine here is to improve the Zacia matchup in a way that uh, Incineroar can't say it does. In the fact that um, Incineroar takes neutral damage from Play Rough, where Arcanine does not. Um, Incineroar is slower, so uh, Arcanine can actually run like a fast Snarl set to maybe tank like a, a minus one Water Spout or minus one Origin Pulse from a... Kyogre if it's running like a salt vest or something um, and beyond that, you know, we see dust cops Which is which is a pretty interesting option for activating like weakness policy with, like bulldoze uh, And trick rooming uh, for the necrozma dust main, which is what I imagine it's doing So yeah, that's that's like a really interesting team. I'd like to see more about that uh, We see Lunaldon once again with a Tapu Fini probably to prevent like burns from Mimikyu and stuff screens as well and a Zapdos uh, we see More Zacian plus Kyogre. This one's got a Lando on it, uh, which is actually pretty nice It helps out with Groudon quite a bit uh, we see Zacian plus Kyogre again. We see another Palkia Ice Rider. Similar uh, composition. I actually have a Palkia Ice Rider team I've been meaning to use. Or actually, no, it's not Palkia Ice Rider. Ignore this. This is this is a Palkia Ice Rider team that I tried recording with, and it was just garbage. Um, I think Landorus in general is like a really good Pokemon that it's going to sound weird to people who aren't familiar with VGC in current day, but I've heard about it in the past. Landorus has kind of slept on in a way. Um, it's not the premier intimidator, and it's not super common due to the fact that Kyogre exists, uh, but Landorus is just really nice into Sun teams right now. It has options for beating um, Charizard in Max Rockfall. It is able to intimidate both Zacian and Groudon while walling out Groudon, and I think it's just like really nice, and I think it's like a nice call to, to run that on this sort of team. So yeah, once again, we see the Sun team, we see the Shedinja team. It's interesting we've seen so much Shedinja uh in this tournament i wonder if that's sort of some kind of adaptation that i'm just not aware of at the moment like or is should ninja picking up because it has a good matchup into sun somehow one would imagine it doesn't because this team does have charizard and incineroar I, I guess i could see how it could be useful in that you could use kyogre to remove the two answers and then all of a sudden they have nothing for should so that could be a thing um we see shadow rider groudon just standard sun beyond that uh we have a double genie uh Zacian plus Kyogre team. See Raichu plus Zacian Kyogre. Uh, Kurum, or not Kurum. Uh, <laughs> I hate Kurum, by the way. Uh, Reshiram actually made top 32 here, which is pretty cool. Uh, I can't imagine what it does. Uh, does Re Reshiram does get Turbo Blaze, so one would imagine you can run like Earth Power on that to deal with something. Uh, I'm trying to think like what Reshiram does for Ice Rider here. It's another Fire type, and technically it does well into Zacian and Charizard but just not just not Groudon uh, but they do have apt they do have answers for Groudon you know they do have Amoongus uh Gastron probably Will-O-Wisp on this Mimikyu and of course Ice Rider does great into Groudon uh, so that's pretty interesting I, I don't know what this team does but I'd like to know what that Reshiram is doing on the team uh we see more Zacian Kyogre but this one's actually running a Dragapult uh most Dragapult aren't super offensive in this format uh, usually, if you're running a Dragapult, it's got like Will-O-Wisp ally switch, that sort of thing, which is really annoying, but uh, it, it's sort of interesting. It's sort of like a Shedinja in that way, uh, but more offensive uh, and, you know, not able to just soak up every hit that's not super effective. And we do see uh, more Kyogre stuff. Seismitoad managed to make top 32, which is really awesome. Uh, we see uh, Zacian plus uh, Calyrex Shadow. And once again, we see an Ice Rider team with Palkia. So, yeah, uh, Ice Rider plus Palkia seems to be making a little bit of a comeback. A lot of a lot of uh, hype for that at the beginning of the format. I think probably my top favorite teams uh, all did pretty well here. Obviously, I'm a big fan of Ben's team, Galarian Darmanitan. I'm a, I'm a big monkey fan. I, I love monkeys, uh, especially Darmanitan with its, you know stupid little um, gimmick of being able to run that ability. It just gives it a free choice ban, so that's really awesome. Uh, but... Yeah, uh, I do like that uh, Calyrex plus Palkia Ice or plus Palkia is uh, making a comeback. Uh, I am a little bit annoyed with how much Sun representation is going on right now, uh, but that is obviously something that can be dealt with uh, through a little bit of a shift in the meta game. And of course, if you're if you're facing the best team, uh, that's to be expected. Like if you go to a tournament, you need to face the best team. You need to prepare for the best team. And you can see that teams that prepared for facing this did pretty well. So yeah, uh, I don't really have much to say on top of that. Uh, obviously, I think that uh, regionals uh, will give you a little bit of a different perspective on the format uh, than uh, saying like ladder play will give you. But yeah, uh, with that, I'm going to wrap it up a little bit more of a quicker analysis than last time. But if you guys enjoyed this, uh, do me a favor, leave a like on it, subscribe to the channel, turn notifications. And yeah, obviously, let me know if you want to see uh, more analysis of uh, top cut results.
But yeah, have a nice night, guys. Bye.